All right, so in this video, we are going to pick out a ship and uh, use that as a kind of consistent uh, ship preference uh, throughout uh, the book. But to get there, uh, let's create a new menu. And uh, here it is. It's, uh, I've just gone ahead and put this in. Uh, one thing that is a little bit different from the last time you saw this uh, page is I took the buttons, which there it is in the background, and uh, or I should say I took the labels and I just made them a parent or a child of the button. Okay, so if you look over here, for example, planet core button, and that simplifies things a little bit. So now if we need to move around the button, it's actually gonna take the labels with it. And um, since our labels are, are really interactive items anyway, uh, there, there's no harm in kind of tucking them deep into the, uh, the uh, uh, child layers of another uh, node. So uh, you can see I've now got a pick a ship uh, button and let's just uh, really quickly review the uh, the menu. Let's fold this back up. So we've got our pick a ship button, which is going to, via the touch up event, uh, open the page, pick a ship. So we do need to create a new scene called pick a ship. And uh, by the way, the events now for pan X and pad Y just include the uh, buttons now, no longer the actual labels. Okay, so let's, uh, let's pick on our uh, planet core scene. This will be the one that we duplicate uh, to make our pick a ship scene. So I'm just gonna go over here to uh, duplicate under file and pick a ship, there we go. And uh, as usual, what I do here is I, I tend to deselect the current scene and then go back over to it. Otherwise, it's it's kind of too easy to edit the one that you didn't mean to, the, the one that you duplicated from. All right, so let's go ahead and keep our star background, but and uh, I guess we can keep the this label up here. So let's say pick pick a ship. There we go. And we'll center that up a little bit. Don't need the core anymore. Don't need this, don't need this, don't need that. We will leave our menu in here though. I don't think we need that. And for our background, uh, just so we don't, we don't have any more issues where new items that we bring in are gonna maybe be behind it at a zero depth. I'm gonna set the background's depth at a negative 100. And just so that this isn't exactly what we had um, in the previous page, let's just set the rotation to 180 so it's just kind of flipped around. Uh, that's, that way, if you went from one page to the next, you're maybe not going to notice it's the exact same background. All right, so we've kind of got a nice little template now. Uh, I've imported in some uh, ships uh, to pick from, and uh, inside of here we've got a uh, texture of ship uh, one, and let's name these buttons, which they are buttons. Let's call them all ship button one, and then you know sequence them up from there. And of course, since this is something that we want to interact with, we do need to give it a custom class of element. So we're going to do that. I will just copy this now a few more times, and then on each one of these, add in the number. So this is really a nice feature of the book, not to pat myself on the back, but uh, you know this uh, whatever ship that we choose can now be seen uh, throughout every page of the book, not just uh, this one. And of course, that's something that you can animate and do all sorts of fun stuff with. Uh, so let's get ready to show that uh, our ship choice. Now the. Um, <laughs> I probably should have made these all about the same size, and they're not too far off from each other, but uh, to kind of set this up perfectly, it would have been best if they were exactly all the same size, because what we're gonna do is basically replace out uh, this image with the texture of whatever we uh, choose. So the kind of the size that you set up over here is gonna be the basically the size that this texture gets put into. Uh, so let's uh, give this a custom class of element and we're gonna call this ship choice and then I'm just gonna take the uh, the opacity down so we don't actually uh, see it initially and let's go start to set things up in the property list. Okay so remember base name is a uh, capital A over here pick a ship so uh, when we Find one of our other pages to copy from. Pick A, and there's the capital, ship. And then let's figure out what we do and don't need. Settings, we can leave them in there and just, uh, uh, we do want the set values of nil. We'll talk about that in a second. As for our elements, 
Uh, let's just delete out uh, everybody for right now. Uh, rotation controls, nah, let's not worry about those. And uh, as for labels, ah, let's get rid of those. Okay, all right, now, uh, here's where things get fun. So we wanna set our set values of nil because that's gonna, it's gonna be a value or essentially a variable that's gonna hold on to whatever our current choice of texture is for our ship choice. Uh, let's initially give it a texture though. So we'll make it that first ship and we get to invent kind of our, our key name over here for the variable that's gonna hold on to that texture. And um, oh, you know what, let's call it ship texture, not vehicle texture. And then the value is gonna be ship one. Now that's gonna match the value that I've got or the asset catalog name inside of here. So our choices are gonna be either ship one, ship two, ship three, ship four, and ship five, okay. And initially setting it to ship one. All right, so what ties the texture of the element to this? Well, uh, let's go ahead and create our element for the ship choice. And don't forget that is of course what the name of this little invisible guy over here ship choice right and then set that to dictionary so we can put in our properties unfold that and all we have to do is just write set texture from preference and kind of the terminology of the kit preference is really just a whatever your saved value is there so this is going to be our ship texture Okay, so let's build it up and see what happens. Space is great, or maybe it doesn't. Pick a ship, and sure enough, there we go. All right, so now what we need to do is actually select these buttons and change this texture. So back over in the property list, let's make some more elements, and we've got ship button one let's unfold this get rid of that and we're gonna add in a either a touch event or touch up event doesn't matter which one you choose and uh, unfold this so we're gonna do two things in here uh, first one is we are gonna set a texture for something as you can imagine that'll be our ship, ship choice so we're gonna write in here set texture and this is gonna be a dictionary because it requires both the thing that we're going to set and also the texture it's going to be. So put a new item inside of here and the first thing is going to be the ship choice. All right, there's that element. And then we're going to specify the texture that it's going to be. So that's going to be ship one and then, which it already is. And then we also want to um, copy in this just to save time, take out set values of nil and we're going to set set values. So now our ship texture is going to be ship one because we want even though that this one is visually going to make the a texture set we want to be able to save that value for down the road right because this is only going to run if there was not an existing value for ship texture so fold all this back up and then what we want to do change this to ship button two unfold this and just start changing all of these around right so we can just do the same thing quite a few more times Ship button three, 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 and that'll give it a, give us enough to test. So let's uh, run it again. Okay, and I did test a moment ago, and I set that to ship too, so uh, it is working, as you can see. So uh, let's just go through here, click on these guys, and then uh, let's go back to the uh, pre the menu page, and then you can see, click down one more time, and it's got our choice uh, from before. So uh, what we could do now is um, we'll, we'll finish up the, with these other buttons, but uh, obviously the I mean, we could give somebody some sort of visual indication that um, uh, that the book is ready to go to another page or whatever, or the choice has been made. Uh, so we, what, we, what we might want to do then is just take some text and kind of uh, zip it in after you have, uh, you know, clicked down on one of these buttons. Uh, and an easy way to do that is uh, to, to put a placeholder 
in here. Uh, let's do it somewhere above our ship choice. And we'll just take a label and just kind of slide it in like that. And uh, there's kind of a, a very easy, convenient way to do that without um, setting up an entire action or anything. There's plenty of ways to animate and uh, move stuff, but uh, this is one of the easier ones. So let's say this is your choice. All right, make sure that's tucked off to the side. And here we go. So we're going to drag in a placeholder. This is just an empty node. And we'll just call this uh, choice uh, placeholder. Okay, kind of get that right about there. I, want, I do want it to be centered up. And then let's go back into the property list. So for any time we touch down on one of these buttons inside of the touch event, we're going to run this same dictionary. Let's go ahead and set it to dictionary. And that is animate node to node. And you've got some other properties uh, for doing this. If you uh, are curious, you can always go into the documentation, check out uh, events for moving and positioning nodes. And that is, uh, there it is, under moving and positioning. And also, too, I meant to point this out for the, um, for setting the texture of elements, you can find that under um, element properties. And there's a few other options. Okay, so uh, inside of here, fold that down. Let's add a new entry. And uh, what we want to do is identify the thing that we're going to move and then where it's going to move to. So that was choice placeholder, wasn't it? And then for the actual uh, text, what did we call that? Line two, I guess we can just keep calling that line two. All right, line two, and then we can just copy this and put it into our other buttons. Okay, so let's see what happens now. And um, animate node to node is uh, again, I I call it kind of a convenience property because it's a, some of the values for animating are, are basically hard coded in. I believe the animation occurs over either one or two seconds. So yeah, that looks like about one or two over there. Uh, there and again, there's ways to set up very in-depth um, movement actions and things like that, which we'll get to later. But uh, you know, if you if you don't really care about how long it's going to take to to animate in, this is a great option to just kind of uh, do it real fast. And uh, yeah, all right. So it looks like this could stand to get centered up a little bit. But uh, we have uh, now picked out our choice of ship. And of course, I'll finish off these other two items uh, on my own. So you don't have to watch me do that. And uh, before I skedaddle on out here, I should uh, mention that uh, you, you could e animate any one of these things on here, including this one that you don't see anything of, uh, at least initially. And of course, that is uh, quite simple. Let's, um, let's, about to say, let's filter this out by there we go, ship choice, there it is. And what is one we haven't picked on yet? So we could scale it up and down. It might be fun to rotate it though, just kind of have a constant rotate action. So let's uh, drop that into there. And we're gonna set the degrees up to 360, maybe the duration to 10. It's kind of a long animation. Uh, let me select it and then you can hopefully see, there we go. So we'll uh, rotate that, so just click the little rotate button, uh, make it infinite, and then uh, that way, when the scene does load up, it will uh, always be rotating that guy. And I should point out too that you don't, uh, you don't initially have to texture that thing. So you could wait till somebody, you know, clicks on one of these for it to show up. But uh, there you go, and of course, uh, your ship choice could also be a button in itself. So instead of just using, the, you know, the next button over here to go to the next page, you could um, also put in those same properties for the ship button to, you know, so as soon as they select it, then they can go on. And maybe that uh, goes to a page where the ship is blasting off or whatever.